All right, so today I'm going to be doing a quick review of a, of a book, a very important book that I have been reading for the past couple of years. And um, every time I go back to it, it just gives me the same type of feeling. Um, basically, it's called Nature Knows No Color Lines. And um, it's made by a man named J.A. Rogers. It was published in the 50s, but it holds a lot of relevance today. The reason why I say that is because um, it gives you an uh, ulterior view on history, per se. Mainstream media um, basically will give you the same depiction of history all day, every day. And even if you Google this book, right, you'll see that it's talking about a hierarchy and, and all this type of stuff. But when you get into the crooks of the book, it, it dives into... Um, history and how it's pretty much um, been made to kind of fool you and not give you the correct stories and not give you the proper context of what was going on, um, you know, hundreds of years ago, per se. So I just want to quickly show a couple pictures just to kind of back up what I'm saying. So pretty much uh, J.A. Rogers made this book. The first few chapters, he just kind of goes back in time and tells you a little bit about Egypt a little bit about um, India, a little bit about um, just all over the world and um, the black, quote unquote, black influence all over the world. And um, then where he goes with it, he doesn't get spiritual. He doesn't get esoteric. He goes straight into the actual um, movement of people during uh, these last hundreds of years. So pretty much when I go into chapter two, uh, sorry, chapter three, the first thing I see is this Negroes in ancient Europe, Greece, right? And that kind of sets the tone. He goes into um, much detail about what Negroes, black people, were doing in Greece in the early times. Popular culture, popular history would lead you to believe that uh, the people that inhabited Greece pretty much um, always have been there. They always looked like that. But in actuality, no, it wasn't like that. And um, again, this book dives into that concept very deeply, um, as you can see another picture here. And again, we're just talking about Greece at this point. We, have, we haven't even gotten to Russia. We haven't gotten to Switzerland. We haven't gotten to Hungary. We haven't gotten to Germany. We haven't gotten to um, England. We haven't gotten to any of those places. But as you can see, some very interesting pictures, but we never really see. And then when you, uh, the crazy part is when you start to actually dive deeper and do your, you know, your own research on some of these names that are dropped in this book, um, like Ivanhoe, for example. And, um, even when I, when I was thinking about, um, the glad, the movie, the gladiator, just things like that, right? Where it, you kind of start to make connections between, um, this book. And what's happening in popular society and kind of the whitewashing of history. But, um, again, it's not anybody's job to educate people, right? You gotta do your own research. Um, you gotta figure out your own bloodline and, um, you can't really take what the mainstream media pushes on you. And that's very important for a young, uh, our youth, youth that look like me. Um, and pretty much just kind of counteracting the narratives. Um, I feel that it will empower them. And um, knowledge is power. So, just one other one other chapter I'll go through before I wrap it up here. Um, yeah, this is Rome. A picture from Rome, right? Again, things that you wouldn't see, right? But Spain, pretty, you know, generally speaking, the Moors, we know about the Moors. But again, this book goes into much more detail on many different um uh, royal families and royal bloodlines, and you you never know. You could be the descendant of a royal bloodline, not even know it. A lot of people do, but majority don't. Let's be realistic. So um, that four hundred year narrative, it's tired. It's out of here. We we don't believe that no more, man. Let's be realistic. Unless you can actually pull up actual records and documentations of you being. An indigenous slave and let's be realistic too there's a picture in here as well that i like to always reference that um shows that it wasn't just blacks in servitude to whites there was a time where whites were in servitude to blacks blacks were enslaving their own people um black 
and yellow people, brown people, they were all in servitude to black people at one point in time. But again, you never really hear much about that in the mainstream media. So um, this book really does a good job of kind of breaking that down. And um, again, I would just, uh, here you go, some more coat of arms here from some notable European families as well. You can see that there. And I just encourage people to do their own research and stop believing these narratives and um, stop getting sucked down that rabbit hole, especially for the kids' sake, right? Uh, black lives have always mattered. I didn't need nobody to get killed on camera to, to know that black lives mattered. And um, yeah, just kind of stop going with the hype, stop going with the trends. And just like try to do your own research and try to be an independent thinker and not be monolithic. That's really my message here. And that's the message I would definitely want to get out to the um, to the youth of the world as well, too. All right. So pretty much that's about it. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, hopefully you, you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. All right. I'm out.